Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in this episode we will be learning about the Hedicium coronarium or otherwise called the ginger lily or butterfly lily. I had actually covered this plant in another episode, the link of which can be found above. Today however, we will cover a lot more about this plant and its upkeep. So this plant is a perennial flowering plant in the ginger family which is native to the eastern Himalayan regions covering countries like India, Nepal, Bhutan and surrounding areas. This grows prolifically in warm tropical areas but is also known to grow in colder countries where the conditions are more tolerable. In such zones it dies back and re-emerges during spring. If grown in the ground, it can grow up to 1 to 2 meters in height. They have these underground stems called rhizomes from which these pseudo stems or fall stems arise and then you find terminal buds with inflorescence. In the ground, it can become invasive, hence using a large size container to grow this would be advisable. So I have grown this plant in this medium sized container which also houses the football lily. So football lily is super clever. It has pushed the rhizomes of the hedicheum to the surface and has probably succeeded in showing the ginger lily its place. But the only area the football lily cannot compete with the ginger lily is the fragrance. It cannot be expressed in words, the strong yet subtle aroma that reminds one of a very happy marriage between the jasmine and the gardenia. The smell is strong the whole day and night and it attracts a lot of nocturnal pollinators because the flower in the night shines more prominently because of the moonlight that serenades the soft glossy white petals of the ginger lily. The rhizomes are edible and are also known to have medicinal properties. But I would definitely not suggest anyone to eat this or any part of the plant, just admire it for what it is worth, an ornamental flowering plant that is fragrant. So the plant is primarily a summer blooming plant wherein the pseudo stems start coming up during the spring when the outside temperature becomes warm. These grow really tall and from this arises a bud which has grooves in it and from these grooves or pockets you can find small flowers arise and they unfurl their petals to resemble a butterfly with beautiful white leathery wings and a stamen that looks like their antennas. Now let us look at what kind of growing conditions this plant likes. They do really well under part sun conditions. If you have this plant in full shade, only the leaves might grow and you may not get the blooms. So some light exposure is required. I have however grown this in full sunlight because I stay in a city that does not get harsh sunlight. So avoid overexposure to sun if you live in very hot places. The leaves also turn light green in color with more sun. Some shade helps it regain its natural dark green colors. So the flowers this year are more curled up and don't look all that great compared to the blooms last year. This could be because of the harsh summer this year or it could also be because of thrips since it is in close proximity to the roses that have thrips in them. But otherwise, I don't see any major pest problems in this plant. Ants for some reason are very attracted to the blooms. Watering would be basic, water consistently during summer and reduce watering during winter. This can tolerate a little bit of a more clay soil because in the wilderness this is found in boggy soil which is water laden. But I would suggest you to grow this in a comparatively well draining soil of 30% sand, 20% compost and 50% garden soil. You could fertilize this with just wormy compost every month during summer and that would be enough. I however haven't used any fertilizer, just give this that little bit of sunlight, maybe an east exposure for people living in hotter regions and west and south exposure for people living in cities like Bangalore and this plant will amaze your nostrils. 
do not trim the pseudo stem till you find no flowers in this spike because this has a tendency of giving out blooms in succession. Once all the blooms are done, the pseudo stem will look pale and you can trim it back to the ground or leave it as is to feed the rhizomes. Trimming will help you get side shoots, but I would suggest that you don't over prune the plant. The stalks can become floppy, so staking this could be necessary. They can be propagated primarily with the help of rhizome division. Don't try taking cuttings of these pseudo stems, it will not grow. A lot of people use this plant in cut flower arrangements, in weddings, etc. It is also used to make perfumes. With all this, the Hedicum coronarium stands tall and proud, showing off its white blooms with much aplomb. With this, we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more updates. The links are given below. So thank you for watching Urbanscape Bangalore and until we meet again, goodbye.